Hello everyone. We're about to start the next session and it is a pre-recorded session. Uh, the session is on structured data across Wikimedia and it's a 45 minute session on successes and learnings. Um, it's all pre-recorded, but you can, um, you know, send us any questions at the end and we can always follow up, but we'll start the recording now. Thank you. Folks in Singapore and good any time of day to folks anywhere in the world. Welcome to this appetizer session that comes right before lunch. We'll do our best to keep it light and tasty, don't worry. We're going to talk about the structured data across Wikimedia program, a three-year effort that involved quite a lot of people ranging from the wiki community, of course, uh, down to the Digital Public Library of America, all the way to Wikimedia Portugal and the Wikimedia Foundation. There we go with our lovely speakers. A special mention goes out to Carly Bogan, Program Manager at the Wikimedia Foundation. Actually, she's not going to speak today, but I really can't imagine structured data across Wikimedia succeeding without her. In alphabetical order, we then have Dominic, data and partnership strategist and the Digital Public Library of America, Giovanna, program officer at the Wikimedia Foundation, Marco here, software engineer at the Wikimedia Foundation, and last but not least, Sofia, projects coordinator at Wikimedia Portugal. This session breaks down into a few parts. I'll start with a helicopter view in, on the program, briefly describing its goals and products. Then I'll do a deeper dive into data pipelines, which serve as a backbone to power image suggestion products. In the third section, Giovanna will talk about events related to culture and heritage. Next is Dominic, who will showcase the digital asset pipeline and the view it tool. And finally, we have Sofia presenting events organized by the Wikimedia Portugal. All right, let's get started. Program overview. First of all, what's structured data? There are a ton of definitions out there, but here's the one I prefer as a technical person. It's all about content that should be readable both by humans and machines alike. Let's pick some examples from the wiki ecosystem to understand the concept a little bit better. Some text from a Wikipedia article is on structured data. It's perfect for humans, but much less readable by machines. Wikipedia info boxes are semi-structured data, an interesting trade-off. Quite easy for a human eye, let's say, not so hard for a robot even. Wikidata is a great example of very structured data. It has a human readable interface where contributors can edit very small pieces of data and under the hood, it's a completely machine-readable knowledge graph. Amazing. And then, easy part of the program name, across Wikimedia. It just means that we aim at scaling the availability and consumption of structured data up to all Wikipedias. Actually, uh, some data pipelines go beyond Wikipedias, reaching out to all Wikimedia projects, although uh, no products are built on top of them as of today. So, structured data across Wikimedia, as though it was all made possible by a grant coming from the Sloan Foundation. The grant started, started back in 2020 and ended in 2023. Specifically, we can see it as a follow-up to a previous grant, uh, which enabled structured data on commons. The high-level goals of as though are all about content. First, we want to improve content search. Second, we want to make content machine readable and build connections across projects. Third, we want to shape more structure where data is especially unstructured, typically Wikipedia articles. These deliverables act as a concrete mirrors to the goals we set. So first, we modernize the Wikimedia search experience. Second, we propose the addition of re relevant media to content pages in the form of image suggestions. Third, we built the necessary infrastructure to enable structured data intensive services in the form of data pipelines. Finally, the implementation of deliverables led to the birth 
of several specific products that we will describe later in more details. Let's list them here. We have media search for commons, search improvements for Wikipedias, the view it tool, data pipelines, which include image suggestions and section topics, the add an image tool for Wikipedia newcomers, and image suggestions and notifications for expert Wikipedia contributors. As I said, a lot of people got involved during the grant period. First of all, the Wiki community, of course. The Digital Public Library of America was responsible for the View It tool rollout. Wikimedia Portugal set up various events to raise awareness on this program. And then you can see, of course, several Wikimedia Foundations teams. I am a member of the Structured Data One, which was the owner of most products. Image suggestions wouldn't be there without the key joint work with the research team who built the prototype algorithms that we refined and put into production. And no product could have seen the light without the extensive collaboration with Search, Data Engineering, Android, Growth, and Glenn. Okay, now let's see a have a quick look at tangible products that made their way through Wikimedia projects. So they're all in production. Media Search. Media Search is now the default search engine interface on Commons and is essentially a modern image search. Uh, it has increased search sessions by 50%. It's extensible and can be plugged into other Wikimedia projects. For instance, uh, it's also available on Visual Editor and Portuguese Wikinews. Then we have search improvements uh, that landed on the special search page uh, of seven pilot Wikipedias, uh, namely Catalan, Dutch, Hungarian, Indonesian, Norwegian, Portuguese, and Russian. They give a fresh look to the rather old fashioned search page and enable more discoverable content, especially on small wikis. Also thanks to more accessible connections to sister projects. Let's just mention uh, the view tool here and stay tuned for later. Dominic will give more details on it. Data pipelines are the fundamental pieces of infrastructure that to let structured data flow across Wikimedia projects. And I'll dig deeper in the next part of this session. Data pipelines enable the development of end user products that suggest images for addition to Wikipedia articles. The first one was built by the growth team at the Wikimedia Foundation and targets Wikipedia newcomers. It's live uh, on Arabic, Bengali, Czech, Farsi, French, Portuguese, Spanish, and Turkish Wikipedias. And as of April 2023, we counted more than 41,000 images added and not reverted through this tool. That's a pretty much amazing result. Besides the news newcomers, we also send weekly image suggestions to experienced contributors uh, through eco notifications. Uh, users that meet certain expertise criteria can regularly receive notifications like this one in the screenshot. And so far, this tool led to the addition of more than 2000 images. The set of pilot Wikipedias that got search improvements also got this tool available. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, let's move now on to the next part of the session, which will zoom in into um, some details of the data pipelines. Okay, let's take a breath and maybe have a drop of your favorite beverage. Uh, I'm absolutely addicted to Japanese green tea, cold brew, in, in a beer uh, glass actually, but it doesn't matter. All right, so what's the idea behind a data pipeline? The Wikimedia Foundation's machines hold so much data that is, it has literally become a lake. We at ESDO made several scuba dives into this huge data lake and built pieces of infrastructure that carry what we need to feed our products. And typically referring to image suggestions, but um, I think it's important to mention here that we could build way more applications driven by data pipelines outputs. 
So uh, before image suggestions, let's first talk about section topics. You'll later see that this data pipeline serves as one of the inputs for section level image suggestions. But please keep in mind that there's a whole lot of other opportunities that could leverage the section topics data set. Such a complex project is better explained by an example. Here's um, what, what we call a section topic, which is essentially a piece of data. Um, and let, let's consider the English Wikipedia article about Attila, the Han Emperor. And more specifically, um, this section titled Solitary Kingship, you can see on the top of the slide. Uh, among all the blue wiki links, that you can see in this section, we pick this one uh, in green, boxed with a with a with green color, uh, about a member of the Roman army, and we call the corresponding wiki data item that you can see uh, at the bottom of the slide a section topic. A section topic comes with a score, telling us how relevant is that topic with respect to the rest of the article content. Okay, so now just imagine that this scales up to all wiki links available in all sections of all articles of all Wikipedia language editions, and there you go, the section topics data pipeline. So without too many technical details, uh, let's see how this data pipeline roughly works. It takes as input the raw wiki text of all Wikipedias, and the Wikidata item page links, which are two data sets that live in the data lake. The first step is to gather the content of top level sections through a Wikitext parser. A lot of effort goes then into filtering sections that are not good candidates for relevant topics. Uh, we'd like to let machines read as much unstructured text as possible here. So we focus on textual sections and typically skip tables and lists. The core part is the extraction of Wikilinks together with their mapping to Wikidata items. So what would we call these section topics? But many Wikilinks such as dates and years typically are not really meaningful, uh, so we may want to filter them out as well. As a side note, uh, filters are, are completely optional, so um, we can reproduce, I mean, we, we can generate a full raw data set for hungrier data consumers like you. Uh, the final step is then to compute the relevant score of every topic to enable uh, a ranking of section topics. Okay, that's it. Uh, now let's move on to uh, the next data pipeline um, and let's have a closer look uh, at the core infrastructure that is responsible for image suggestions. Meet Alice and Slice. Alice stands for article level image suggestions, while Slice is section level image suggestions. The goal behind both of them is very simple, to recommend images for Wikipedia articles and sections that don't have one. The main data sources we leverage are Commons images, of course, Wikidata and Wikipedias. First, let's understand how Alice works um, through an example. On the left of this slide, we have an English Wikipedia article about a genus of fishish, fishes with no images. This is a suitable candidate for illustration, right? The corresponding Wikidata item at the top of this slide holds an image property that links to a, the commons image you can see on the right, this fish. Cool. That's one good signal for us to suggest that image. And well, uh, it turns out we're also lucky enough to have the same image of the same fish appearing as a lead image in the Catalan Wikipedia article, which is the equivalent to the English one we have. So the signal 
here uh, for a relevant suggestion gets even stronger. And we're definitely confident enough to go for that fish image and suggest it to the initial English Wikipedia article. Um, I hope uh, that the previous example has shed enough light on the mechanism behind Alice. And let's zoom now um, in, in a little bit more. Relevant image connections come from two Wikidata properties, image, P31, and commons categories, P373. As you have seen, another signal stems from Wikipedia lead, lead images. And finally, um, this isn't mentioned in the example, but we also use the peaked statements from the structured data on commons project. So the first obvious step of the pipeline is to gather all image candidates from commons that match the given connections. Then we assign a relevant score depending on the connection, uh, namely Wikidata images get the best score. Commons categories and Wikipedia lead images follow, while the big statements are the least strong connection. Um, this is according to a manual evaluation we made. And finally, we collect Wikipedia articles that don't have an image and match them against all images for suggestion. Okay, after Alice, we have Slice, section level image suggestions. This is definitely the most complex project, but also uh, the most interesting one in my opinion. So let's describe it again with an example. On the left of this slide, you can see an English Wikipedia candidate section about the design of boomboxes. This section contains a Wikilink to Sharp, which maps to the Sharp Corporation section topic, as explained before. And this topic, or Wikidata item, links to the Sharp Corporation's Commons category. And there we go. Here's an image suggestion a set of boom boxes called ghetto blasters. Moreover, it turns out that the equivalent article section in the Japanese Wikipedia also contains the same image. Great! It's an intersection of signals and this suggestion looks like a very relevant slice then. And so we send it to the section, to the initial candidate section. Now, let's take a closer look at the machinery behind Slice. We leverage two principal algorithms, section alignment and section topics. So given a language and a Wikipedia article section, the former retrieves images that already exist in the corresponding section of other languages, while the latter takes the section's wiki links and looks up images that are connected to them via several properties typically Wikidata ones. So the, the connections are the same as Alice, except the, the picked statements, which were not useful enough for this purpose. Okay, um, but let's see what section alignment. So section alignment is based on a machine learning system that automatically aligns equivalent section titles across Wikipedia language editions. Uh, all we have to do is to extract section images from all Wikipedias and then combine them with the alignments to output image suggestions. The section topics algorithm first take as input to the section topics data pipelines output. And the goal here is to build a visual representation of Wikilinks in Wikipedia article sections. So we, we achieve so by following two paths. The first starts from a wiki link and traverses the corresponding Wikidata item down to the commons image that stems from the Wikidata image property. The second one instead just looks up the Wikipedia article's lead image from a given wiki link. So it's important to note here that we apply these paths to both the wiki link and the article it belongs to. Uh, this is to ensure that the suggested image is both related to the Wikilink and its article, thus ensuring uh, relevance uh, of a suggestion. Fantastic! Uh, that's all for me, folks. Um, I really hope you enjoyed these parts of the session. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Giovanna, but 
of course, let's not forget proper attribution to the images I used in my presentation. So you can see the attributions here. Cheers, have fun. Hi everyone, hello. Uh, my name is Giovanna Fontenelle. I am a promoter for the Cultural Heritage Team at the Wikimedia Foundation. And for the past few years, our team has been involved with the, with shared data related initiatives in order to engage cultural heritage materials on the Wikimedia projects. And our objective, together with members of the shared data team present here in this presentation today, as well as some others working with related projects in the foundation, is to support and increase image usage across the project. Uh, the projects, as well as structure Wikimedia to reach uh, global communities. And among the projects that we supported as the Culture and Heritage team was first the Shared Data on Commons for GLAM institutions, in which we provided better guidelines on how to use Shared Data uh, for Culture Heritage materials. And we also enhanced the related documentation pages on Wikimedia Commons, such as the uh, Shared Data on Commons pages on Wikimedia Commons, and it started a more extensive discussion around the usage and the modeling of different metadata, but primarily, especially uh, the depicts and its references and qualifiers. In order to populate the at the time new media search and make the materials more findable, searchable, and available through search and the Wikimedia Commons query service. In this first moment that I just described, um, the Digital Public Library of America, DPLA, uh, participated very actively and continued to engage on these activities that I just described. And they do that even to this day with some other uh, funded projects since. And they did that as one of the biggest Wikimedia Commons contributors and as an institution that really wanted to make its fi files more findable online too. And I will not talk about this project more because Dominic, the one um, responsible for this project in this presentation, is presenting next about the PLA and also about the view to view it to which we also help to uh, provide guidelines while developing. And um, similar to the PLA, our, pro our team also supported Open Refine in its funded project. And uh, the goal for that was to develop the addition of data on Wikimedia Commons functionalities in OpenRefine, launching a new version of the tool, which was already vastly used uh, by cultural institutions, even to add metadata to Wikidata already. And with this project, the tool could finally be used for adding metadata to the images on Wikimedia Commons, making them more findable, findable on Wiki, especially on search and on Wikipedia. This point that I just uh, described being more findable on Wikipedia is the key here in this presentation today. Uh, usually cultural and heritage institutions want to contribute to Wikimedia not only to achieve their education, preservation and outreach goals, but also to have their content more findable, accessible and available online. Uh, projects such as uh, image suggestions by the Shared Data Across Wikimedia team and the newcomer experience pilot from the GROW team aim to achieve just that, uh, making media fi files more findable uh, and connected across projects, especially on Wikipedia, using structured data. Our team also participated in the newcomer experience pilot by organizing uh, uh, what we call the hashtag one peak one art event with Wikimedia Argentina, Wikimedia Chile, and Wikimedia Mexico, in which glam professionals helped to test if the add an image feature was an attractive way of adding images to Wikipedia articles. Uh, the feature also used your data and other information to offer customized suggestion and also um, 
added image descriptions, which was very important for our team. Uh, the initiative happened on Wikimedia in Spanish with uh, cultural and heritage topics, as well as topics related to those countries. And finally, back again with digital data across Wikimedia team, we organized uh, one event to test the email suggestions and notifications on Wikimedia, Wikipedia in Portuguese. The idea here was to offer images as suggestions to be added in articles, and it was aimed at more experienced users. Um, the event was uh, organized uh, by us, the, both teams, and with uh, Wiki Editores Alexis and Wikimedia Portugal. And it was about women and music. So we only added um, and added images to articles uh, in Portuguese with those topics. So biographies of women with um, related to music. And I will not talk more about this because Sofia Matias from Wikimedia Portugal will talk more about it. And that's it for me. Here is my contact info. Thank you so much. My name is Dominic Burbett. I'm the data and partnership strategist for DPLA. Um, so just some, some quick uh, background. And uh, first of all, what is DPLA? So Digital Public Library of America is uh, a nonprofit uh, member network that aggregates digital collections for over 4,000 contributing cultural institutions um, in the United States. So it's essentially a search portal um, for searching across all of the libraries and museums and archives um, in the United States. Since the start of 2020, um, we have uh, launched what we call our digital asset pipeline to Wikimedia. Just a quick summary of what we've accomplished so far since 2020. Uh, DPLA is now the single biggest um, kind of uh, contributor to Wikimedia Commons. Um, and uh, so we have uploaded over 3.7 million files to Wikimedia Commons, um, generated 250 million page views. There are over 300 contributing institutions across the United States. Um, and as part of this, it's not just an upload project, but we've actually developed technology for synchronizing continually over time, the metadata for the files that we provide. And that's what I wanna talk about more. This um, synchronization project uh, makes use of structured data on Commons. And so in addition to those 3.7 million uploads, I took a look today and the, our bot account has actually made over 15 million other um, edits uh, because we're constantly uh, adding new metadata and um, updating the existing structured data statements. Uh, so that represents about 50 to 100 million structured data statements. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell because we're kind of um, maxing out what the query service can actually handle. Um, the technology we developed it uses um, Wikimedia um, uh, database queries. So I use Quarry for that. And uh, the code for the bot is written in Python using PyWikiBot. And on Wiki, it relies on Lua-based templates to display the metadata, um, which I will uh, show you right now. I have some tabs queued up, so I'm going to go through and just kind of quickly walk you through um, the how the structured data part of this project works. Um, so this is an individual um, file upload. Uh, it comes from uh, one of our partner institutions, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, um, uploaded through our hub, the Northwest Digital Heritage, uh, in uh, which is the regional hub for the states of Oregon and Washington. Um, and so you see here, as you expect under Wikimedia Commons pages, all of the data that we upload along with the image, uh, and it comes from, from the catalogers, from the source institution. Um, when I look at the structured data tab to see, you'll see all of this data is actually represented as structured data statements. For each statement, we use a qualifier that says that um, this data was determined by a GLAM institution at its website. We provide a reference for every single DPLA originating uh, statement that uh, uses the DPLA catalog as the, the reference URL. Um, and the reason for that is um, uh, whenever we uh, make changes, we only will change things that are 
um, supposed to exactly match what's the, the current state of DPLA's catalog. So this allows, uh, using the reference statement like this, allows the Wikimedia community to make changes um, to any of the structured data for a given DPLA upload, and we're not going to mess with it or override it in any way. Um, so this is what this one file looks like represented entirely, all the descriptive metadata re represented as uh, structured data statements. Um, and uh, one of the, uh, the goals of this project and what this has allowed us to do, um, which I'll show you, is to be able to actually uh, reflect, uh, make changes to the structured data, um, which uh, allows us to easily detect changes when we have uh, something out of sync in the catalog. We just compare values across the two sources from the DPLA API. Uh, we make those changes and uh, they're immediately reflected in um, in the uh, in the actual wiki text of the page uh, once we've finished migrating all the templates. But this is showing you the ideal case here. So if I hit edit at the top of the page here, you'll see what I mean, which is that uh, that all of the text that you're seeing there, all the data that you're seeing there was actually generated live uh, on the fly from the actual structured data on commons. Um, okay, so this is uh, View It. It's a, another tool that I made with uh, together with my partners, um, Kevin and Jamie. Uh, this was our team. Um, and uh, this, the goal of View It is to um, provide uh, browsers, readers, and editors um, of Wikimedia projects uh, easy access to all of the images uh, on Wikimedia Commons representing the topics that they're actually looking at. Um, so they're not limited to just what, you know, editors of, a, of an article have curated for that image. Um, and the idea of this really comes out of um, the fact that structured data and, um, you know, depict statements in particular uh, allow us to have these, draw these relationships where we can be looking at an article and know, um, you know, through the technology, all of the images that are tagged on commons as, uh, you know, depicting that subject. So to start off with, this is the, the tool, uh, documentation lives on MetaWiki. You can go to meta.wikimedia.org and search for view it tool. Uh, it is a user script, which means at this point, um, you need to be logged into an account and you would add it using the very simple instructions there. It's just copying and pasting to a page um, to, to add the, the code to your account. Um, and what you will get will be a, a set of um, uh, tools and links on your uh, page when you're viewing Wikimedia projects that will let you see more images than you normally see. So this is a quick screenshot. I'm going to quickly walk you through what that uh, looks like in practice. So here we have the view it tool page on Meta. Uh, I've gone through, I've installed this, the script um, using the, the instructions here, and I'm going to show you what that looks like on some pages. So you can read through the article to see a lot of images that the editors have selected, or you could, um, if you're, you know, wanting to just see the images uh, right away, or the reason you're looking up the topic is to see pictures of that thing, um, view it, showing the images at the top will uh, provide you really easy access. Um, you can expand it, um, like I already had before, for uh, a little more real estate devoted to the images there. Um, what these images represent are images on commons uh, that either uh, depict mangroves, um, meaning they uh, have a depict statement in their structured data in which the value is the Wikidata item that's linked to the Wikipedia article for mangrove, um, or are in the commons category uh, that is also uh, linked as the category for mangrove from its Wikidata item. Um, and so that's data being pulled live from the API. Um, there's also the, the view it tool adds this view, new view tab to the top of the page. Um, if you click that, um, it will give you an actual, uh, like full page gallery, uh, and which will infinitely scroll, um, for images of this subject. So I pulled up here, the James Whitcomb Riley Museum home, um, which is a museum 
uh, about a mile from my home and also one that is one of the participating institutions in the DPLA project I was just talking about and um, its collections have been uploaded. Um, so here you can see uh, it's a, a little bit of a shorter article. Uh, it has one main image and a few in a gallery. Um, you know, I, I noticed as I read this that um, View it is showing me all of these images at the top that are historical photos, including some of the interior. None of the articles in the in the image as I came up to it um, have any photos of the interior yet, even though as I read it, I could see uh, that there is actual text on the page. If you can't read that, it says the interior woodwork is all hand carved solid hardwood. So there's text on the page that, re that relates to the interior of this building. Um, so what I want to show you here is also how view it is useful for editors. So when I hit uh, edit, you'll see all of the images uh, in the, the top now have little copy to clipboard icons. So it allows me to just quickly go to the one I want. I'm going to choose one that shows this interior woodwork. Um, so I'm going to click on this, this one, just the, that copy button, uh, and go to where I want to put it. And I'm just going to paste it in there. Uh, it went down to the bottom because of this info box. I'm going to hit move it to the left, caption there, uh, and publish. I've done this completely live entirely using View It um, and made the save. Então, olá, eu sou a Sofia Matias, eu trabalho na Wikimedia Portugal como coordenadora de projetos e também, sou, também faço parte das Wikiditoras LX enquanto voluntária. Nós organizamos uma, uma atividade que tinha como objetivo testar a ferramenta de sugestões de, de imagens na, da, da Wikipédia, ou seja, a, a partir do momento que nós já tivemos a, a ferramenta, nós começamos a receber notificações com sugestões de imagens para os artigos que nós criamos ou que nós estamos a, a, a vigiar. A atividade em si correu bem, uh, nós tivemos que determinar um, decidir qual o tema desse, desse, desse encontro para testar a, a ferramenta. Nós, em vez, nós abrimos a atividade a qualquer pessoa que pudesse participar, participar dando preferência a quem, tinha, a quem já tem experiência na, na edição. Uh, participa -se, não participaram, não participaram muitos, muitas editoras, uh, isso levou a algum certo problema porque as outras pessoas que participaram nunca tinham editado na Wiki, então nós demos por nós a explicar como é que editava na Wiki e não, não testamos realmente a, a ferramenta como ela poderia ter sido bem, 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 pronto, bem, bem testada, bem, bem analisada, trocar ideias e por aí fora. Um, na minha opinião pessoal, eu acho que a ferramenta é extremamente útil e que pode ser usada, digamos, entre duas valências, uma, uma no dia-a-dia, -dia, que é aquele editor que, vai, que entra na wiki e vê que tem uma notificação e vai ver se aquela imagem pode servir ou não no artigo para qual está sugerida, um, e depois também pode servir para desenvolver atividades paralelas que, para dar a conhecer o, o Commons como, como uma, uma das plataformas da, da, da Wikimedia, não só de imagem, como também de sons e, e de vídeos e por aí por, 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 por. Na, na atualização do dia-a-dia, -dia, eu acho que é bom porque nós criamos os artigos, a maior parte das vezes quando vamos ao Commons, as imagens não estão todas, com as, não, algumas não têm categoria, outras não têm, não têm um, outras categorias estão erradas, ou, um, os dados não os dados, os dados não, não estão completos e por aí fora. Então, a partir do momento que a gente abre aquela imagem, para além de nós decidirmos se ela vai ser ou não usada naquele artigo para o qual foi sugerida, nós podemos aproveitar e completar os dados que estão uh, no Comas associados àquela, àquela imagem. Pode ser os dados estruturados, a descrição, a captação, se tiver só em inglês, pôr em português, francês e por aí fora, de maneira a facilitar que quando alguém for procurar uma imagem sobre aquele determinado tema, essa procura seja mais fácil. Um, para além disso, ainda em relação com a Wikipédia, aquela imagem, para além de nós temos aquela sessão de imagem, para além de nós vemos aquela imagem vai ser ou não usada no artigo, nós também podemos ver se ela realmente se contém algum erro, de repente pode ser um nome muito parecido e depois daquela imagem não fazer sentido para aquele artigo, então podemos mexer no conteúdo 
nos dados associados à informação, associada àquela informação e alterá-la e, e corrigi-la e também podemos aproveitar para ver que outros artigos é que ela pode ser usada. Portanto, fazemos todo algum um trabalho de, de pesquisa e assim conseguimos melhorar vários artigos ao mesmo tempo, porque nós acabamos sempre não só a inserir a imagem em si, mas também inserir portais, para a atividade, fazer algum tipo de correção que seja rápida e, e pronto, conseguimos, em vez de só um artigo, melhoramos logo um pacote deles se tivermos tempo e disponibilidade. Na parte didática, na parte de fazer uma maratona de, de edição no Commons, por exemplo, o objetivo é mostrar como é que se inserem os dados estruturados na, nas imagens, ou com, completar a, a descrição ou por aí fora, também é útil, porque nós temos a parte, nós, nós quando organizamos a atividade, nós tivemos de decidir o tema, era para ser mulheres na, na, na arte em si, pintura e por aí fora, mas resolvemos abranger mulheres de uma forma geral na, na cultura, porque nós não tínhamos imagens, não sabíamos que tínhamos imagens suficientes para distribuir em quantidade suficiente para que toda a gente pelo menos experimentasse uma, uma vez a recebesse pelo menos uma, uma notificação, porque nós não fizemos a triagem dos artigos que as pessoas teriam feito uh, relacionados com arte, uh, portanto isso criava ali uma, uma limitação em relação a, a, a testar a, a ferramenta em si. Então foram mulheres na cultura e nós temos de fazer todo um trabalho uh, uh, prévio que foi uh, ver realmente que imagens é que estavam associadas à arte, cultura, a cultura no forma geral da arte, pintura, cinema, uh, pronto, música, por aí fora, e ver quais é que estavam associados a mulheres porque nós focamos muito uh, nas questões no gap de género como um, um subtema, digamos assim, da, da, da atividade, por causa daquela questão em que menos de 25% das biografias que estão na, dentro da, da Wikipédia têm a ver com mulheres, de uma forma geral temas relacionados com mulheres associados a mulheres estão, estão uma, é uma porcentagem muito baixa comparativamente aos homens e, e para além disto, daqueles que já existem, só 20% é que têm imagem, portanto é, um, é, muito, é uma taxa muito, muito elevada, então nós conseguimos resolver, tentar resolver logo vários problemas ao, ao mesmo tempo. Um, agora perdi aqui um bocadinho importante, Numa, pode ser uma atividade para dar a conhecer o Commons, pode ser uma atividade que mais direcionada para editores já experientes, que já sabem como é que o Commons faz, ou que já até pessoas que já inseriram imagens dentro do Commons, mas não completaram as entradas todas, porque nós sabemos que uma pessoa pode só tanto deixar os, os, os passos, a mostrar, a apresentar mais a ferramenta, a, a plataforma, como é que ela funciona, como é que ela pode ser melhorada e pode ser tanto para um editor mais experiente, depois pode se associar à liquidata e qual é a relação do, do Commons com a liquidata, para além da, 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 da relação que já tem com a Wikipédia, que é mais fácil de explicar, com a liquidata às vezes não é assim tão, tão patente. Então, podemos trabalhar uma série de questões relacionadas com, com o Commons, que ao contrário da Wikipédia e da liquidata é um bocadinho negligenciado e quando quando, quando não devia ser por neste momento um artigo que tenha uma imagem, tenha um vídeo, tenha um fonograma, tem muito mais visualizações, é muito mais apelativo do que um que é só texto corrido. E então, ah, portanto, dar mesmo a conhecer também o Commons em, em si. E lá está, pode ser usado para diferentes tipos de públicos, é só uma questão de adaptar a, a linguagem ao, diferente, ao diferente tipo de utilizador. Ah, Pronto, basicamente eu acho que, que é isto. Qualquer coisa é só colocar questões e a gente depois responde.